It's every grower's worst nightmare, but every once in a while, we all end up getting spider mites. Happens to the best of us. We have a lot of people come through here and it's not uh, surprising that eventually we ended up with spider mites. So to treat these guys, um, I gave these a uh, spraying down with neem oil, as we've demonstrated in the uh, previous video, and uh, waited about three days after spraying it down with neem oil and we've got our predatory spider mites here. Now these guys come in the mail overnight shipping and they come in a nice little cooler packed with their own little ice pack. And we have predatory spider mites. These are little tiny spider mites, just like the nasty spider mites that eat our plants, except these guys specialize in eating other spider mites and they leave the plants alone. They don't create any webbing. They search and hunt around on the plants looking for spider mites to eat. So it's not a problem in terms of them um, spreading around your grow. It's actually a good thing because they only eat other spider mites, the bad spider mites. So I'll show you how to apply these things to our plants today. Depends on exactly what stage your plants are in, but um, for plants where you can't spray, if you're in late flower, for example, and you really can't spray anything, and don't even want to spray with water, these guys can knock down spider mites for you and you don't have to spray with anything. People have questions about, uh, well, are they going to stay on my buds? No, they're always looking for spider mites. As soon as you harvest and start drying the buds, they're going to scurry away and look for something else to eat. They're not there like the bad spider mites looking to eat plants. They're not going to hang around as soon as there's nothing for them to eat. They're going to leave. So these are wonderful things. They help uh, stick around and their population increases as the spider mites do until they wipe them all out, which is our goal. So to apply these to vegetative plants where we're not concerned about getting the corn cob grit that these spider mites come in um, all over the plants, the easiest way to get them directly to where we want them to be, where the spider mites are hanging out, is to just use plain water and mist your plants down. And the point of this is just to get the leaves just wet enough that when we sprinkle these guys on, they'll stick to the leaves. So once we've got our leaves all moistened, they recommend that you um, not vigorously shake, but uh, shake up the container a little bit to spread the spider mites. However, they may have decided to uh, group together in shipping. You want them to be distributed equally. And this is just, uh, they put a material in there. I think this is corn cob grit just to give the spider mites something to hang on to while they're in shipping. They don't do very well when they just plop them in a container with plastic walls and it freaks out the spider mites, the good predatory spider mites. So they give them something to hang on to in shipping and it comes with a convenient little shaker top and we just start spreading them around. We wanna make sure and get them on every plant And of course, if you had a plant that uh, the spider mites were initially attacking, you'd want to give that plant a little bit more. But whenever we treat like this, we always treat all of the plants in our grow, whether or not they had spider mites or not. We're putting the beneficial mites on. And if they don't find any spider mites to eat on that plant, they will move on. And maybe they'll even lay eggs in the corner of your grow room for you that'll come back to haunt the next generation of spider mites you get, the um, bad spider mites that you might get. Mm -hmm. 
And people ask if the corn cob grit or whatever material they come in is bad to leave on the leaves. It doesn't really hurt them. It, it uh, does block a little bit of light. So after a couple of days, we'll go through and just give the plants a little bit of a shake to get that corn cob grit off. And in my head, I can imagine hundreds of bad spider mites screaming in terror as I'm doing the equivalent of sprinkling lions on their heads. It's a wonderful thing. All right, so as you can see, these plants are in full flower. Luckily, we don't see any signs of spider mites on them. But if we had spider mites somewhere else in our grow, chances are a few of them managed to make it over here. So we're also going to treat these with the beneficial spider mites, the predatory spider mites as well. Now we don't want to really just sprinkle this stuff with the corn cob grit all over the flowers because it would stick to the flowers at this point and that's uh, not easy to clean up. So instead what I've done is folded a little paper satchel here and I've just got some wire that I'm going to use to uh, hang it on the plant. I'm just creating a little paper satchel here by folding a piece of paper in half and folding the bottom up. We don't want to use tape because the uh, mites might stick to that. And then we create a little hanging point. Stick some wire through. And we're gonna just take a little bit of the beneficial spider mites and put them in this little satchel. And then we're going to hang this off of the plant so that the spider mites will naturally crawl up into the canopy can also sprinkle them on the soil, but then they've got even longer to go. And if you just watered, they may get lost in the soil. So it's a little better to put them up here. Um, various places that sell the beneficial meat, uh, spider bites actually offer these pre-done in little packets as well, if you don't want to make your own. <laughs> 